Bonjour! I want you to take some time in this video to tell you a little bit more about my life story. This video is about following your passion, following your own path and not the dreams of others. I have great success today, but I've had so many failures in my life and I thought maybe for any artist out there which want to become a better artist, want to do something that really is he's passionate about, maybe this will inspire you to um, have the life you should have because Although today my work is in over 70 galleries around the world, you know, I've published five coffee table books, which are bestsellers, with one of the largest coffee table book publisher on the planet. Life has not always been like this for me. And I wanted to give you really a little backstory. And I hope this is going to inspire you to follow on your own path. This whole passion about photography came a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. I'm not kidding. When I was 14 years old, I went to see The Return of the Jedi and this movie blew my mind out completely. Everybody at school was talking about it. I have never seen something that had so much influence on the culture where I was living back in Paris. And when I was 14, I decided, okay, I'm going to be an actor, a director, a filmmaker. I want to do something artistic with my life because it influences so much people. And well, I got into my teens years and it was really rough. I had acne all over the face. I was very introverted by the way I looked. So I sort of like gave up about acting. I was passionate about computers, so I got into coding. And little by little, this sort of first enthusiast to be a filmmaker, an actor, or whatever I wanted to do just started fading away. Don't get me wrong, I love computers and you know I learned coding and I started making money in my early 20s with coding, but it was a substitute. It was not what I wanted to do, you know. People were pushing me to get into coding and, you know, I sort of like follow this advice. I remember even like at night dreaming that I was going to be an actor, that I would meet Steven Spielberg or I could be a filmmaker or I could be a photographer. But I was just convinced that I was just not good enough, not good looking enough, not whatever enough to be able to make it. And so I gave up. Now, in my 20s, as I was doing coding, there was one specific actor in France that I love so much. His name is Jean-Paul Belmondo. He's a very over-the-top actor. He's one of the most biggest iconic actors we have in France. And he such, has such an amazing spirit of play. Every time I would watch one of his movies, it would sort of rekindle the purpose of being an actor or a filmmaker in me. But then I eventually just went back to coding and went back into, you know, my day-to-day -day life. And I just was really convinced I was not good enough. At the age of 28, my brother created an amazing web agency uh, in Paris and I started working for him. This was an amazing company, but it was not my purpose. Although I really enjoy working with my brother and I really enjoy working with the team that was there and we took this wave agency from being a very small number to really a large number and I really enjoyed the process. It was actually the first time I was actually doing something that I felt was mattering. But, you know, every time I would see Jean-Paul Belmondo, a great movie, I felt sad. I said, I want to, you know, be an artist. I want to make something artistic with my life. You know, by then I had like four kids with my lovely wife, Karen. But every night I would talk to her, you know, about I want to make, you know, art. I want to make photos. I want to make film. I want to make, you know, and I was not happy with my life. And time was flying by. I felt by the age of 60, I would have done nothing that I've always dreamed about. And every time, as I said, I would see a good art piece it just rekindled in me this idea of doing that. By the age of 34, I started taking acting lessons because uh, I really wanted to do it, you know, and I started to do, uh, learning filmmaking. I tried to make films, you know, back in 2004, but it was really hard because there was no cameras. Before the 5D Mark II from Canon from March 2008, if I remember well, there was no cameras out there that could do great videos. I remember I had to rent like a really expensive Canon camera to really get a bad video. So I was trying to get into filmmaking, trying to start into acting, but it was really going nowhere. In 2004, 2005, I went on vacation with my best buddy, Kelvin Pimon, and I took a photo of a girl that was with us. And he said, have you ever heard about Photoshop? I said, yeah, I heard about Photoshop, never used it. So he opened up Photoshop and he starts erasing the tourists behind her, making the sky better. And this was a revelation. I said to myself, until I can figure out how I'm going to be a filmmaker, I can at least take photos because the problem with filmmaking back then is, you know, you need actors, you need a gaffer, you need uh, uh, cameras, you need a lot of things, a lot of people, a lot of resource, especially in 2004 to make a movie. But with Photoshop and one camera, it was a huge epiphany to me, I can at least create. So I started doing this process where from 9 to 6, I would be the vice president of my brother's company, but at night, I started taking photos of Paris and I did this for many, many, many years. 
So four or five years into taking photos of Paris, I started to have a great body of work of photos of Paris. And a lot of people were asking me, how do you take these photos? How do you retouch them? And so I found a website called tutorial.com and I started sharing my tutorials free and paid. And small by little, this started to be a good success. So in 2010, I quit my job and I started just doing interior design photography, making tutorials, and that's when I started doing a YouTube channel. So I'm just gonna teach photography because it's been working well in French, I'm gonna do it in English. And as soon as I started going on YouTube, and I'll make a whole different videos on that, because I really advise you to get on YouTube, my whole life started blowing up. I mean, as soon as I stopped working with people which were not following my path and really doing my thing, so I was just making YouTube videos, shooting interior designs and making French videos, my life exploded. And miracles started to happen one after the other. I'm gonna give you a couple. Miracle number one, I'm like five or 10 videos into my YouTube channel, I get an email from the director of a school, the Da Vinci School, one of the biggest web mastering school in France. And he says, oh, I started watching your stuff on YouTube. And you know what, I've got six students that can help you build a website, a SEO, a whole web presence. Uh, you know, to sell your photography or your tutorials because I really want to help you. You know, it's totally free. Would you be okay to have six students to work with you on this project for a full year? I'm like, yes, I would be okay. So I started working with the students, you know, just out of the blue. It was so cool because, you know, they were very knowledgeable and they helped me build a great website and SEO and a lot of things, you know, just pure miracle. One of my dream was to work with the Yellow Corner Galleries. Now, if you don't know what the Yellow Corner Galleries is, it's amazing. They have like 10 galleries in Paris, 70 worldwide, but not like small galleries. It's big galleries like by the Louvre, by Saint-Germain-des-Prés. I mean, like prime, prime location. And, you know, I pass in front all the time, you know, for like many, many years. And so one day I got the email of the owner and I sent him an email and... Actually, for a year, I harassed him and nothing, nothing. He would answer, sometimes he would answer an email like, oh, I did a, a photo shoot of Paris under the snow. Here's my best 10 photos. And he would respond and says, do you have something else to show me? And I would, but nothing ever happened. A year later, I passed 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. So I sent him a little email saying, hey, I just passed 100,000 subscribers on YouTube as a teacher on photography. Five seconds later, he called me, says, let's have a meeting. We had a meeting and he says, you know what? I'm gonna test you on three photos. I'm gonna take three photos, put them in galleries, see if they do any sales. I'm like, great, let's do it. A week later, he calls me back and he says, you know, I spoke to a publisher. They, they are looking for somebody to make a book of par about Paris. Would you be okay that I present your work? I said, sure, I would be okay that you present my work for a book about Paris. No problemo. And so he did, and he calls me about a week later. He says, you know what? They are super excited. They looked at all your photos. They really wanna make this book. I'm like, let's do it. So. This must be like Tuesday, Wednesday. We had a meeting the week after with uh, Flammarion, huge French publisher. The next day, and thank you to Google Image, a German publisher, Tenhaus, finds me, contacts me and says, I want to make a book about Paris. I'm like, yeah, but I'm already booked to doing one with Flammarion next week. He says, no, 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 you don't understand. We are like much bigger than Flammarion. We are international. We have office all over the place. Your books will be everywhere if you work with us. I'm like... He says, you don't understand. I really want to work with you. I'm going to fly tomorrow with two of my executives and I want to meet Yellow Corner and I'm going to convince them not to work with Flammarion but to work with me. And the next morning, I am not kidding. This started with an email and next morning they were in Paris. So Hendrik Tenaus, the owner of the company was there with two of executives and we had this incredible lunch with the two owners of Yellow Corner, which I only met one, not the other one, and some other execs, there's like maybe 10 people at the table about my work as a photographer. I hardly knew the people from Yellow Corner. And, and they were like, yeah, we want Serge Romelli, we want his book. And I was like, and we want to make a book about Paris, and we want to make a book about New York. And I was like, and we signed a deal for two books. I was blown away. I mean, it was like unbelievable. Once the launch are over, the guys from Yellow Corner look at me and says, who are you? Like, these people fly over just to stop us to work with Flammarion, to work with you. We'll take 30 photos from you. And my life completely changed in that one meeting. I went from not making money with photography to having 30 photos in galleries and 70 galleries around the world to book deal. The morale of the story is you have to believe in yourself. I changed my life at 40 years old, you know, from having a great salary with four kids to try to become a photographer. How crazy is that? Today, I make a lot more money with my work, you know, as a photographer than I ever made, uh, you know, as a salesman. 
You know, I didn't even do it for the money. I was ready to lose money. I lost money for two years. You know, I don't care about the money. I care about doing what I love in my life and not doing what other people want me to do with my life. So after I got this deal on the books and the gallery, at the same time I had the idea I want to get back into filmmaking. You know, I feel the force is with me. So let's, you know, do that. And I took the Canon 5D Mark II and I shot a short story called Arthur. It's an action film, uh, six minutes long. More about that. I shot it in, in 2000, 2011 or something like this. I posted right away. You know, we did it over a weekend. It was a short action movie. I really liked it. And this, I had no idea, would bring me so much luck later on. Talking about luck and talking about doing what you really want to do in life, I really wanted to get back into acting. So I had this idea of doing a short movie, which was going to be a challenge for me as an actor. Arthur was not about me. It was me about filming somebody, somebody else's work. It was me directing. So I wrote a short called If Only, which is a crazy story about a man who dreams to be uh, with a woman and um, doesn't dare to talk to her. So he has like daydream of being like James Bond or Bruce Lee or different things, you know, in the hope to seduce her. And I did this on purpose because I really wanted to challenge myself as an actor. So I did that short. And honestly, I got so scared. It was the first time I was acting and I really flipped out a lot. And I almost canceled that last minute. But anyway, I had a good friend who helped me on the photography and he really encouraged me and we did the short. You know, the thing that I did from 2010, from the moment that I stopped working with my brother's company is I really worked hard. I was spending two, three hours, two hours per day minimum on tutorials, learning filmmaking, photography, retouching, acting, whatever I wanted to do, shooting every day, you know. But the thing is, now I was doing my passion. Now I was, you know, I had found a way to make money between the tutorials and the sales of the different books and, and photos in galleries. So I was making money on my dreams. And it's, it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of learning. I think if there's one advice I can give you is learn every day. Whatever your passion is, spend some time learning every day and put it into practice right away. You know, uh, I've had a lot of miracles happen, but it, I think they happened because I was on the right purpose and I was doing the things, you know, I think when you s just wish and you don't do, you're trapped. You know, you need to wish, but to do the things. And I was doing lots of things. I'm a very active person. So anyway, under my belt, I had two short movies, one with me as an actor and one with me filming. And I eventually met somebody who had an idea for a movie in Hollywood called The Hollywoodans, uh, an American production where they were looking for a French actor who could play some guy who's got no visa, who's trying to make it in Hollywood and all kind of strange story happens to him. And he said, you know, I, I looked at your YouTube stuff. I really like what you do. Uh, you know, would you be okay to play as a lead? I was like, would I be okay to play as a lead? Yes, sir. Anyway, he wrote the story. And in the meantime, I was in Paris doing a yellow corner opening and somebody from Canon comes and sees me and says, you know, would you like to work with Canon? It was right at the time when I switched to Sony. I was not shooting with Canon anymore. I was shooting everything with Sony. And I said, yeah, but I just switched to Sony. You know, he says, it's fine. You know, we really like what you do. I like what you do with Yellow Corner. I see your YouTube channel. You know, here is my car. Just call us if you want something from Canon. So when we started working on the Hollywoods, we were looking for money. And I remember this guy from Canon. So I sent him, if only, the short that I did as an actor and said, look, you know, we have this project about the Hollywoodans. It's I'm going to be the lead just like an if only. It's a much bigger production. You know, would Canon uh, think about sponsoring the movie? And he called me. I remember it was four o'clock in the morning because you know, it was a jet, you know, that like the vice president Canon French called me and says, we love if only and we are going to sponsor your movie. We are going to give you anything that Canon ever produced, any camera, any lenses, you can have them. Uh, for free, you have to. It's it's like a free rental, but it was worth about forty thousand dollars free of rental. It was amazing. The only problem is that it was Canon France, and so my son had to go and get the all the gears from the the DP and then fly with a passport for the gear. We shot the movie and bring everything back to Canon France. But it was a really cool experience. We got to use the best that Canon has to offer on filmmaking. It was amazing. The movie came out on Amazon Prime. It's got great reviews and I'm very, very proud of the Hollywoodans. Other things now started happening. My short with Arthur, the action short that I shot seven, eight years ago, for some reason, like nine months ago, started going viral. I'm talking 500 to a million view per month. Uh, another channel took it. It has two million views on it. So much that a big producer saw the movie 
and I pitched him on the idea of making a long feature film called Once Upon a Time in Paris, working with a screenwriter who did The Hollywoodans, and we're working on this project that I'm hoping to shoot within a few months as a filmmaker, which is a really cool, very uplifting action movie with parkour martial art in Paris called Once Upon a Time in Paris. The moral of the story is that I spent my entire life you know, thinking I was not good enough, not good looking enough, not intelligent enough, not talented enough. And you know, I only took the courage of my own hands in my 40s to do what I did. There are other things that have helped me, spiritual and philosophical things that have helped me a lot in this process. But the main thing is, you know, do your passion, find out what you really want to do. And if you're lucky enough to have something that you want to do, figure out how you can monetize it so you can pay your rent and your food with it, whatever it is, maybe it's going to be teaching, maybe in tutorials or helping in that field, whatever you can do, find a way to finance your dream early on and work on it. You know, I think that if I would have seen a video like this when I was in, in my 20s, I would have probably economized 20 years of my life. I mean, I don't regret what I've done, but I could have done it earlier. And I hope this will inspire you to follow your own path. You know, all the people that are around me that have suggested other paths were very well intentioned. They didn't mean harm to me. You know, they wanted me to be a salesman or they wanted me to be, uh, you know, to work in that specific field or in a tourist area, whatever, you know, th but they were working or thinking about their own purpose and their own, and their own agenda. You got to work on your agenda, on your own goals. If you like this video, just give it a like. It really helps to get this video out there. Also, leave me a comment and tell me what you would like to learn on photography, on business of photography, or even like sort of inspirational videos on different subjects. I want to have your viewpoints. I make two videos per week, every Tuesday and every Friday. I need ideas. So give me a comment and tell me what you would like to learn. Like this video, this will change your life and my life if you like it, I'm not kidding. Guys, I created a special place for you with all the shorts that I've talked about. Hope you love them.